Hello? Hello? Knock, knock, knock. Good evening. Good evening or good afternoon, as usual, as you want to consider this. Do you consider this evening or afternoon? Well, whatever it is, <laughs> it is Monday, it is 6.30. I know a few of my students are not here tonight and I'm very sorry, but they have a lesson. They are in a lesson right now. So I know they will not be able to, to be present on this, but it, it's, not, it's not a problem because as we have finally written in the first comment, you can always, always find these um, live streams on our YouTube channel. So if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to the new new YouTube channel, uh, Speak Parla Para, where you will find all the collection of these videos and perhaps even a few more, you know. Uh, and so you can always see what we're doing. You can keep up with your English. You can keep up with your... Uh, listening skills because this is what they are at the end of the day they are kind of um, lessons for you to improve your listening skills because i am speaking after all but you are listening and you are reacting and there we go a few of you are switching on hello <laughs> i love declarations hello good evening good evening everyone thank you for being here uh, let me find my coaster I used to have a coaster. Do you know what a coaster is? Hello. Hello, Patrizia, Giuseppe, Rosa, Toto, Giorgia, Mino, Asen. Yes, hello. And please, please, please share this video. As usual, we want people to be around. This is a good appointment. I feel that this is a date that we have every week, three times a week. So I'm very happy if you want to follow me, follow us. This is... This is a page that is constantly evolving, okay? As you may have noticed, we have changed the pictures on this, on this page and soon the name is going to change. So stay tuned and invite people, share, 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 get them, get them to come over, get them to, to interact. My day is very good, thank you, Toto. I'm very well, thank you very much. Hello, Marina, hi. I'm still looking for my coaster ah uh, there it is okay yes it's not really a coaster it's my diary but this is hot hot tisan is sottotitoli in italiano no <laughs> no rosa because apparently when whenever there are subtitles in italian the sort of automatic translating machine translates my italian as well and apparently Last time this happened, I somehow managed to mention Roman emperors and, and God knows what. So no, I am not having subtitles. You'll just have to listen. Ma qualche volta parliamo anche in italiano, Rosa, ok? Solo quando è particolarmente difficile. Io uso sempre questo metodo di fare sandwich. Quindi c'è English, Italian, English perché il nostro cervello così ha appena il tempo di capire quasi in maniera un po' subdola il messaggio in italiano, ma rimane l'inglese. And this is the trick, this is what I want to do. Ok, Rosa? Come sempre, queste dirette eh, live stream di Facebook sono destinate a tutti voi, quindi c'è chi ancora deve prendere familiarità con l'inglese, c'è chi con l'inglese è già molto in amicizia e quindi va bene, a volte mi dite parla in italiano, speak Italian, me lo dite proprio così, che... <ride> speak Italian, e io parlo in italiano, altre volte mi dite no, 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 ma che English? Allora, non si può sempre andare bene a tutti. Allora cosa facciamo? Un po' English, un po' Italian, un po' English, un po' Italian, ma più English. Ok? Rosa, io sono alle prime armi. Yeah, ok. Allora, sai cosa devi fare, Rosa? Intanto provare a seguire il più possibile, ovviamente in English, perché tra un attimo tutta questa bella parlata in italiano passa in English. Ok? 
starò attenta, andrò piano, perché come tante altre persone qua c'è bisogno di andare lentamente, però non bisogna essere troppo gentili, <ride> bisogna andare anche un pochino, fare un po' di stretching per l'orecchio, ok? Yes, Rosa, ok, ho visto che hai detto yes. Toto, uh, I am drinking... I am drinking a tisane. It's, it's, uh, today is my detox day. It's detox Monday for me. E quindi oggi è tanta water, tante green tea and tisane. E questa è... Ma I think it's licorice, a mint and a fennel, probably. It's not tea. It doesn't contain caffeine. It is delicious. But to be honest, I don't know. I don't know what there is in here. It's good, it's nice. Smell it. Yeah? Did you smell it? It's very nice. Very, very nice. Do you ever do detox days? For me, it's a necessity now because after all this winter and, yeah, you want a little bit of this. Yeah, okay. And summer is coming next and, you know, the mind and the body feel the need to detox a little to, to the new energy, new life, like feeling light and, and sort of, you know, get rid of a few toxins in every possible way. So this is, this is me now. So did you have a good weekend, students? What did you do at the weekend? Tell me, write a few comments. And probably you will have noticed that I asked What did you do at the weekend using the simple past? Because as Alessandro was saying, at, um, during his last, his, his recent, I think it was last week on Wednesday, his, his uh, live stream on Wednesday, present perfect starts in the past, but has an effect that still continues on the present, on the now. Simple past is something that happened in the past and stays in the past. I like to call it a closed time. So this is why I'm asking you, what did you do at the weekend? And rightly, Sabrina, oh, Sabrina, <laughs> thank you, oh, very nice, thank you. And Rosa said, disegno, ooh, drawing, very nice. Yeah, you see, you see, I visto, Rosa, che hai capito, very good. Linda, I worked. Yeah, you worked. Oh, what is your job? I took one of my daughters to a volley match, volleyball match. Nice, Rita. Yeah, you took. You have your daughter and you take her somewhere else. This is a, is a is good use of taking. Taking from one place to another. Always think about the combination take away. Not to be mistaken with bring. Bring is similar idea, similar sense, but different direction. Lucia, I worked in my new house because I am moving house in a few days. Ah, okay. I hear a few people these days are moving. So congratulations. Yeah, are you happy about it, Lucia? So a lot of work, huh? So the weekend is, is the time to do it. Linda, I'm a waitress. Okay, okay, there you go. So you worked, yeah. Well, good, there is a bit of work, so that's good, nice. Come on, I'm waiting for a few more people and then we can start. Some of you um, asked for this um, live stream, for this mini lesson, it's not gonna be very long, because my idea is to split in chunks the explanations and the usage on modal auxiliary verbs or models as we call them. So tonight we start with can and could and be able, but there are many more and we will analyze all of them in the next few live streams, okay? So every Monday with me, this is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna do other grammar points or particular words or expressions. I know that some of you also wanted to know more about idiomatic use of the language and we will do that too. You know, the idioms are so 
many and they can be simply just invented all the time pretty much so we can do a few we can do like the the 20 most important one important the ones that I is you no know, good to know about Katerina hello hello Katerina hello Patricia I have been gardening most of the weekend ah Patricia interesting okay i like the idea of gardening very much i i would love to be able to do a little gardening i am not very good with the plants i've got not the green thumb my thumb is black i manage somehow to kill all my plants so i need to be careful my husband is good with plants though he's good but listen listen patricia if the weekend is finished and it has finished, it's now over. Why are you using the present perfect? Present perfect means that the continuing effect or your gardening work is still effective now. But you were gardening during the weekend, the weekend is finished. So, okay, this is, this is, this is what we're talking about. And uh, Ricardo says, few, but we are the best. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, Ricardo, there are a few people here. Generally, there are many people following this, but many of the people following are actually my students, like you, students in Speak. And at this time of the day, there is a lesson in Speak. So they can't be here. But I was saying earlier on that if you can't be here, student, Fear not, don't worry, because we have a YouTube channel. I want to say a new YouTube, a new YouTube, new YouTube channel. <laughs> Tongue twister, new YouTube channel, new YouTube channel, new YouTube channel. You say it, I can't say new YouTube channel. Hmm? Speak Parlem Para. So you can switch on to that, subscribe, activate the little bell, ding, 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 ding. So you will get notifications, okay? When there is a new video, when there are new lessons, free, free, you know, these are free. So here and on the YouTube channel, some are longer than others. Some are just literal mini bites and recorded. Some are live streams. So you can always find everything that you think is interesting for you or important in topics and you can click and just follow and repeat and pause and fast forward and go back and listen to these lessons again. So Lucia, till now I was in a rent house and now I am going in my property house. Ah, that's good news, Lucia. That's, ah, congratulations. Yes, yes. Elena, interesting. Thanks a lot, Laura. Thank you, Elena. And uh, Claudia, yes, I like idioms. Yeah, I like idioms too. Lucia, I make confusion, confusion, I make confusion. I confuse, I make confusion. Yeah, with idioms, okay. I understood. Thanks so much. Yeah, good, good, Patricia. Yes. Just think of closed, closed, like, like in a circle, like in a bubble. The time is closed when the effects of the action are completely finished, confined, or you have a definite timeline. Words like ago, last month, in 1995, uh, a split second ago, okay, five minutes earlier, um, in February, whatever. When, when the time is limited and enclosed, that's when you have to use the simple past. Simple. So I gardened most of the weekend. Yeah, or I worked at my garden most of the weekend, but that is correct. Yes. Let me have a swig of my tea. Do you still remember the difference between swig and sip? I think I gave you all a practical demonstration with a, what was it, a glass of water, a cup of tea? When I drink my tea and the tea is hot, I tend to sip, like, These are sips, ladylike, <laughs> more refined in a way. Unfortunately, I'm not really ladylike. I like to swig my tea. Oh, most of all, when, when you have a, a bottle of water and you're really thirsty, you do not, you do not sip it like that. You tend to go, oh, just, just gulp it down. That's a swig, okay? So there's a little difference here. 
probably is the same difference in Italian between sorseggiare e prendere un sorso as in, I don't know, uh, what, what am I saying here? I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong. But for me in Italian, the difference between sorseggiare is like to sip in nice little movements, quite elegant, quite refined, and oh, gulp it down like bere un sorso un po' abbondante, okay? So that's a swig. Swig and a sip. Anyway, we're going off topic here because the topic tonight is modal auxiliary verbs. So I am going to just introduce to you what I would like to talk about in the next few weeks, okay? This is a list of the modal auxiliary verbs that I want to talk about with you. So we have can, could, may, might, shall, should, must, ought, will and would. Will and would will come last because I want to do the future, back to the future. We've already done a future, an episode on the future. It wasn't at all finished. It was just an introduction, just an idea. Again, you will find it on the new YouTube channel. I can't say this. How, how silly is this? So if you want to take a look at that, you can always go click subscribe, activate the little bell and Bob's your uncle. There is an idiom for you. Bob's your uncle. It means easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Comments. I worked in the garden. It's better. In Gurgitar. Yeah, probably. <laughs> this is the idea. Whoa. Golf it down. Yes, Patrice. Okay, let's go back to our models. So, um, as you know, modal verbs, modal auxiliary verbs are used before other verbs in tags. What are tags? What are tags, I ask you? And in short answers, what are tags? This, this, this should deserve a proper live stream, the tags. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we will do this. This is what happens when we do these classes in speak. Lots of things come out from what we say. So here they are. Comments. Trangujari. <laughs> yes, okay. I'm not trangugiating. Doesn't exist. My tea because it's too hot. So I'm sipping it today. Hmm. It's really delicious. I think it's the mint. Mint and licorice and fennel. And there is something else. It's good. I feel, bing, I feel that this is very good for me. So, um, tags and short answers. Let's consider this example, which is really what we're going to talk about. Okay. This is just a random example. But if I say, you can swim, can't you? Yes, I can. Now, let's look at this example. We have the modal verb can, okay? Now, an important fluency point, not pronunciation, because this is not really about pronunciation, is more about where the stress of the sentence goes. You can swim. You can swim. Do you hear me? The accent and the pronunciation, the stress, goes on the verb swim this one okay so can sounds more like can can you can swim you can swim repeat after me you can swim all right and this is the standard idea of the use in a phrase like this in a sentence like this you can swim can't you yes i can look at this structure this is where we find the tag that i was talking about what is a tag? Tag. Tag is this situation where you start, for example, in this case, with a positive, affirmative sentence. And then to confirm and reinforce that concept, you put it in a negative form. So you can swim, can't you? Or you can't swim, can you? So the negative becomes positive and the positive becomes negative in the same phrase in a question form like this. This is not just for
for modal auxiliary verbs, okay? This is in general, in English. You don't think so, do you? It's to reinforce the idea. In this case, I've just used the negative form of do with don't, and then I've reinforced the idea with the do. So inverting the positive. Don't worry too much about it now. We will do this again. Just start repeating this. Start getting familiar with the idea of inverting again within the same sentence, negative and positive, positive and negative, to reinforce what I'm saying. So repeat after me. I said repeat after me. Sorry, my tongue went in the wrong way. I can swim. You can swim, can't you? Yes, I can. And this is the short answer I was talking about. So in this, in this very simple phrase, we find the three points that we have just mentioned. Auxiliary verb, before a verb. Auxiliary means helping verb, okay? So can helps with the message, the idea of being able to swim. Can't you? The negative inversion with can, that was at the beginning here. And the short answer, yes, I can or no, I can't. A little point on pronunciation here, can, I can't. There are different accents, as we know, of English, okay? My colleague Mike from Texas and my colleague Mary Lee from California, they would say, and my relatives from California, they would all say can or can, meaning yes or no. But the pronunciation has to be, it's, it's basically the same, can or can, okay? You need to be able to detect and understand from the context of the phrase whether they are actually saying, yes, I am able to do something, or no, I am not able to. Personally, I tend to emphasize the different pronunciation here when it's positive in an affirmative way, I definitely say I can swim, can, can swim, I can swim. If it is a negative, I can't open it and stressing it, quite marking it, making sure that we understand what we're talking about. So if you're not at that stage where you can detect and recognize and be able to really understand if it is a yes or a no, emphasize it, okay? Make it clear to yourselves first. Are you affirming or are you negating something? Okay, yes, I can or no, I can't. Open it. It's not being posh, it's not being snob, it's not being ooh, British English. It isn't. It's a matter of being clear. Nod if you understand. I can't see you if you're nodding, but I hope this is clear for the moment, okay? Please write in the comments if you are understanding while I have a sip, a ladylike sip of tea, which I should do with my pixies up. This is my pixie. Where is my cat? Where's Richie? He's not here yet. Hmm, he was here. All this time he was here. He's, he's, he's left me. He's gone out on the terrace. Okay, so seems clear you're not writing to me. So I'm just continuing with the example. Oh, yes, here's another example with another auxiliary verb, modal auxiliary verb, what we've seen at the beginning. And this is shoot. In this phrase, which I'm producing to you now, there we go. They shouldn't be here. Should they? No, they shouldn't. Okay. This is a different auxiliary. This is a different modal verb. This is should. It's not can anymore. We will analyze this in the next few lessons over the next few weeks. For the time being, for the moment, please make friends with this usage. Okay? Be friends and just get acquainted, get familiar with this idea of tags. This shouldn't is negative. This should not be here. And then immediately to reinforce the idea, I write it or I say it in its positive form. So should they? No, they shouldn't. Short answer. Hmm? Comments. 
Oh, Elena, maybe a rich is sleeping as my Jack usually does. Yes, your Jack. <laughs> I've seen, I've met your Jack. Have I met your Jack? Well, yes, I have actually. No, it's not Richie. Uh, Richie, Richie is not, he usually doesn't sleep at this time of day. I think it is more likely that he is upstairs on the terrace enjoying the final few rays of light. Today, it's been a good afternoon. Yeah, quite good. This morning started in a bit of a drizzly way, drizzly, rainy, spitting, as we say in English, like a few drops of rain here and there. But then it did, then the afternoon evolved, it went like nice and bright. So this is this is good. Ooh, stomach is rumbling. Okay, so this idea of tags like this one, should they, shouldn't, should they, can, can't you? Um, a very very useful in English. So again, start learning this idea to avoid, if anything, per evitare, to avoid the use of the word in fact. Because in Italian, there is infatti, infatti, infatti to reinforce, to say, yes, I agree with you. In Italian, we say, yeah, infatti, not in English. This is a word that in English is not used in the same way as in Italian. What is the equivalent of si, infatti, in English? Ha, there we go. The question, the tag, not the question, but the tag, the idea of a tag. They are very useful. For example, if you think of two people, person A and person B talking. Person A, this one, says, hey, she is very clever isn't she okay this is a question tag to say è vero infatti okay but question person b didn't repeat the whole phrase person b simply said isn't she come per dire è vero infatti è così she is very clever isn't she like yeah that's true or person a says that film was terrible wasn't it? Come per dire, è vero. Qui era was terrible, affermativo. La tag sarà negativa, perché deve affermare una cosa invertendo. Wasn't it? What a lovely day today, isn't it? Clear? Questo è un piccolo extra eh, che abbiamo messo, ma è molto utile per la comunicazione in English. Non ve lo dimenticate? Scrivete queste frasi, write them down. Quella di prima, ve la faccio rivedere, I'll show it to you again. You can swim, can't you? Yes, I can. You can swim, can't you? Yes, I can. Can, can't. Mm? Per confermare, per confermare quello che ho appena detto. Anche qui. Dipende dall'intonazione, lo dico in italiano per farvi l'esempio pratico. In questa frase... Io che mi rivolgo a un'ipotetica persona per chiedergli se sa nuotare, posso dirla in due modi. Uno, confermare una cosa che so già. In italiano direi, eh, ma sai nuotare, no? Questa sarebbe la versione italiana. E in un certo senso anche qui ho un tag. Sai nuotare, no? Capite? Stessa cosa in inglese. You can swim, can't you? E questa è l'intonazione che va in giù per affermare una cosa che già penso. You can swim, can't you? Sentite, you can swim, can't you? Va giù il finale della frase. Se è un genuine question, se è una cosa che io veramente sto chiedendo, sentite l'intonazione. Ricordate quella di prima che andava in giù? Sentite questa. You can swim, can't you? I repeat. You can swim, can't you? È vero che sai notare? E questa è la domanda per chiedere veramente se sai nuotare o meno. Comments. Ci tengo molto che sia chiara questa parte. Isn't. It means it is not. And it is clear. Ok, Patrizia, thank you. Yes. Yes, isn't means it is not. Yes, Ioana. Yes, that's what it means. Ma qui siamo oltre la grammatica. Qui siamo nella comunicazione in inglese. Okay, this is about communicating effectively in English. Quindi d'ora in poi 
prima di utilizzare in fact, in fact, che esiste in inglese, ma non vuol dire infatti in questo senso di confermare una cosa con cui vogliamo concordare, pensateci, fermate tutto e pensate ai tags di cui abbiamo parlato ora. Back step, torniamo un attimo indietro ai nostri auxiliary models. E fermiamoci un secondo perché io voglio fare can, could e be able. Ok? Can, could e be able, che più o meno indicano lo stesso senso, indicate that something is possible, possibility, o somebody has the ability to do something. So can, could or be able for possibility or ability. Look at this sentence. We can see the park from our window. We can. Si può vedere il parco, la pineta, in my case, dalla nostra finestra. Si può. Ok? È una possibilità, è una è una cosa reale, è un'opportunità che abbiamo. We can see the park, si vede, abbiamo questa capacità. O, can you speak any foreign language? Sai parlare qualche lingua straniera? Can you speak any foreign language? Can you? Have you got the ability to do, to do this, to speak? Ok? O, in its negative form, perché adesso stiamo parlando tutto per affirmative, ma ovviamente c'è anche negative, e da qui vediamo la regolina dei modal auxiliary verbs. Non serve do, does or did. Il modal verbs ha la sua personale applicazione. I can't come, can't, se non sappiamo ancora riconoscere can, come, I can't come and see you tomorrow, unfortunately. Non ci riesco, non ho questa possibilità. Non che non lo so fare, ma non ho la possibilità. Qualcosa mi blocca, unfortunately. So, I can't come and see you tomorrow, unfortunately. All right? Be able to is possible instead of can, but can is really more usual. Okay, is more, is more used in general. For example, the phrase before, can you speak any foreign languages? I can also say, are you able to speak any foreign languages? And that's okay, perfectly fine. The message is the same, okay? Remember also, are you okay here? I'm not continuing with new examples because I would like you to write this, these phrases because it's useful, you see a lot of things coming from here. So please, please, please let me know if everything is okay, if you're still following this. And remember, don't forget, remember to switch on to the YouTube channel and the Instagram, newborn, neonato, newborn Instagram page, so that you can also follow us there and there will be new content. And also, abbiamo anche un gruppo qui su Facebook, eh, che si chiama Speakers Corner, <ride> che ovviamente è aperto a tutti, a tutte le discussioni, è un gruppo pubblico, potete cercarlo, è collegato alla nostra pagina Speak, Fall e Impara e ci siamo anche noi con tutti i teachers, quindi potete lanciare discussioni aperte, contenuti in English, ok? YouTube and Instagram and Facebook are our social medias. So there we go, let's continue for a little, little bit longer. I don't want to bore you, non vi voglio annoiare, non vi voglio stancare, ecco perché li facciamo in piccoli installments, li facciamo a rate questi modal verbs, ok? Partiamo proprio con questi, can, be able and could. Mm, mi appunto una zanzara, un mosquito bite, qui, qui, un mosquito bite, how horrible is that? Anyway, modal auxiliary verbs have no infinitives or participles. Instead, we use other expressions like be able to, be allowed to, have to, start thinking about this other possibility, manage to, ways of conveying, of passing the same message contained in, for example, can, but in a different way. I will explain to you what I mean, because we are analyzing can, and you have to remember can, can has only two forms, can, 
the present, the simple present, I can see you, and could for the past. So sometimes it is necessary to change this form and transform it into something else. Be able to. Compare. Look at these two different sentences here and write them down. Number one, they're both negatives, okay? Number one is, I can't sleep. Or in Mike's voice, I can't sleep. Hmm? Same thing, I can't sleep. And I haven't been able to sleep recently. What's the difference here? You tell me. And I'm waiting for you to comment on this particular situation where you have, I can't sleep and I haven't been able to sleep recently. Bottoms up. Mm -hmm. Waiting for you. If you are following this on the YouTube channel, you can also take a few notes of this. You can write these phrases down and think about what we're considering and what we're about to say. Mosquitoes! I hate mosquitoes so much. Don't you? Rosanna says present and past. Yeah, okay, present and past. So, what kind of past is this, if it is a past indeed, Rosanna? Do you notice anything? Earlier on, we were saying that can has no participle. There isn't any past participle, okay? So this is why haven't been able becomes transformed. It's, it's can that changes. So I can't sleep is in general. Yes, participio passato. Yes, Rosanna. Present and present perfect. Yes, Enrica. E perché present perfect è cambiato in haven't been able? Perché non ho usato can? And you all hate mosquitoes. Thank you. Yeah, they're horrible, aren't they? Oh, what is their use? What is their purpose? Why do they exist, mosquitoes? Of all creatures, of all possible situations, why mosquitoes? Why do they even exist? There must be something good about them but I can't think of anything. So, can has got no participle, participle, past participle. Ecco perché dobbiamo cambiarlo e transform is exactly what we were saying earlier on. Però c'è anche could, ok? C'è could e c'è was able to, abbiamo detto prima, quindi c'è can, could and was able to. Past form was able to. Sometimes, Sometimes could is the past of can. Abbiamo visto che can ha due forme, present, I can, and the past, could. E talvolta si trasforma in to be able to. Could is especially used in the past with the number of specific verbs, okay, which are very common to find in combination with could. Talking about the past here. Remember. These verbs are amongst the most common see, see, hear, smell, taste, feel, so the five sense, senses, remember and understand. I repeat, could at the past, as the past form of can, is used especially with these verbs. The verbs relating to the five senses, so see, hear, smell, taste and feel, touch, okay, for example, or feel as in the emotion, remember and understand. I am curious because I see, I am unable to fall asleep, I'm unable to fall asleep. Okay, Joanna, people are going to be really confused because you want to explain too much words and how to understand. Well, these are examples, Joanna, okay? 
and you need to be able to understand a little bit of English. This is not really, really beginner's English. This is somewhere in between basic and intermediate. So I understand I'm trying to do this in English because I feel that English is the way, okay? But I also want to explain this in Italian if it isn't clear. This is why I translate. Hmm? But I don't want to be technical. I don't want to give you a lot of grammar bits because at the end of the day, I want to be able to communicate with you and I want you to communicate with me or if not with me, with anyone who speaks English. Okay, this is my idea. I recommend, raccomando, I recommend that you watch this again. And if you don't understand something at the beginning, then try to follow, try to listen, see what I am saying here, see, seguite, follow what I'm saying, and then go back and watch it again and repeat, 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 okay? Claudia says it's very clear. Thank you, Claudia. Okay, but I understand, Joanna. It isn't easy. I understand. I know, I know. Please tell me, Joanna, especially you, I'm talking to you directly. Tell me what isn't clear. I can repeat this, okay? I have a little time. So with these examples, with these specific words and verbs using could at the past, here is an example. Talking about the past, not the present. When we went into the house, we could smell burning. Quando si entrò, quando entrammo in casa, si poté sentire, si sentì. Avemmo, avemmo avuto questa capacità di, di sentire l'odore di bruciato. Sentite che, che pletora di, di, di parole in italiano. In English, we could smell burning, che passa proprio quest'idea di capacità di sentirla con il nasso, di utilizzare il senso dell'olfatto per detect, per, per rilevare l'odore di bruciato. We could smell burning. Hmm? Vediamo un po'. Yeah, yeah, I am understanding everything. I'm not talking about myself just generally. Okay, Joanna, yeah, yeah, I understand. I know you understand because I've seen you before. So it's okay, it's okay. Next example, again, in the past, could, with this idea of capacity and ability for the past. She spoke in a low voice, but I could understand what she said. Okay, she spoke, spoke, the past to speak, in a low voice, quiet voice, but I could understand what she said. E io però ho capito lo stesso che cosa diceva, anche se parlava a voce molto bassa quietly. Hmm? Could, questo could, is also used to say that somebody had, because we're still talking about the past, let's not forget, had the general, mark my word, general ability or permission to do something. So general ability or permission. Questo, quello quando parlo di abilità, capacità, permesso, parliamo di generale in, nel senso di ciò che passa a un verbo come can e could, ok? Si capisce sempre dal contesto, io lo dico sempre, sempre con una z, lo dico sempre, ok? In questo caso stiamo per parlare di could al passato, come abbiamo fatto finora, nel suo uso quando qualcuno ha avuto, perché siamo nel passato, had, la abilità, la capacità generale, in generale, generica, o il permesso di fare qualcosa, permission or general ability. For example, my grandfather could speak four languages. In vita sua aveva questa capacità di parlare quattro lingue. O the children they were completely free e questa è la situazione generale they were completely free they could do whatever they wanted che significa they were allowed to do cioè gli era concesso gli era permesso they could do whatever they wanted in general 
okay? So could, could is used for general ability, but if we are talking about, aspetta che voglio togliere questo banner, se no vi confondo. If we are talking about a very specific of what happened in a particular situation, e adesso vediamo, we use was or were able to, o anche managed to, riuscire a, essere riusciti a, stiamo ancora parlando di passato, invece di could, di abilità generale, general ability, se parliamo di un evento, situazione precisa, specifica, dobbiamo cambiare, could non va più bene, perché could abbiamo appena detto che va bene per general ability o permission. Guardate qua, questo è l'esempio di general ability, per reinforce, rinforzare quello che dicevamo prima. Paul was, perché siamo nel passato, was an excellent tennis player. He could beat anybody. La sua abilità generale era di fare secchi chiunque a tennis, perché era particolarmente bravo. Excellent player. Ok? Attenzione, arriva Jack adesso. Specific situation. Vediamo se me la fa vedere. Come on. Yes. Paul and Jack had a game of tennis yesterday. Notate, yesterday chiudiamo l'azione al simple past nel passato, quindi had a game of tennis yesterday. Paul played very well, but in the end Jack managed to beat him. Alla fine, anche se Paul ha giocato molto bene, e Jack ha vinto. Ha fatto in modo, è riuscito a manage to beat him. È riuscito a vincere. Qui non va bene could. Perché? Perché a differenza di prima, unlike the earlier on situation, this is specific. Siamo in questa situazione in cui equals, he was able to beat him in this particular game. All right? Do you understand? Have you followed this? Questo è quello che c'è da sapere riguardo can, able, to be able to, e could. Se pensiamo di aver capito, facciamo un piccolo test per voi. Prima volta che faccio questa cosa, vediamo un po'. You have to answer in the comments and you have to fill in the little blank space. Dovete riempire voi il blank space che adesso vi do. Ok, vi do pochi secondi, capite il contesto e ditemi che cosa usereste. Dovete scegliere tra can o able to. Be able to, was able to, is able to, am able to, quello che volete, quello che per voi è giusto. Ready? This is number one. George has traveled a lot. Nella sua vita, present perfect, ha viaggiato tanto. La conseguenza è conse, consequen, cons, consequence, conseguenza con G in italian, consequence con Q in English. He mm, speaks four languages, like my grandfather. What do you think? Can, dice Enrica. So Enrica says, George just traveled a lot. He can speak four languages. More comments? I'm not saying anything here. I'm just acknowledging the fact that can is... Pff, could, dice Claudia. He could speak four languages. Can, dice Sabrina. One more answer. George has traveled a lot. He... Oh, Lucia dice could. Quindi abbiamo due could, due can. Oh, Lele and Claudia. Claudia adesso dice can. <laughs> Giuseppina says he was able to. Ah, this is a nice variation. And the answer is... Drum roll. Right. Patrizia dice could. The answer is can. Can, 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 can. Yes, Linda. Perché can? Perché George has traveled a lot. George ha viaggiato tanto nella sua vita ed è ancora vera questa affermazione. Perché? 
torniamo alle lezioni precedenti, perché è un present perfect, è iniziato chissà quando per George, ed è ancora vero, e come conseguenza, con un G, adesso lui sa parlare, ha questa capacità di parlare all languages, good for George, eh? Understand? Se vogliamo usare able to, che qualcuno ha detto, Giuseppina, non dovremmo usare il passato perché significherebbe che adesso non le parla più. Però questa cosa è ancora valida, quindi il senso dovrebbe rimanere ancora aperto come possibilità che ha tuttora. Quindi casomai potremmo dire he is able to speak four languages, che va bene, è corretto, non è sbagliato, però can ha più no. Okay, can. Ecco, the next one, ready? Vediamo un po' cosa mi dite qua. Similar concept. Sandra, mm, drive, but she hasn't got a car. Sandra, mm, drive, but she hasn't got a car. What do you choose? Can or able to? Or could? Waiting for you. Do not think too much about this, uh, honestly. This is just to get it in the use. Is able to? Yeah. Good, Enrica. Yeah. Could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Depending on what, how you understand this phrase, Sabrina could. Claudia says can. Can. Maurizio. Okay. More. One more. Be able to, says Linda. To me, seems both right. And you are right, Rosanna. And you are right. Sometimes the difference is so, like, fine. Very thin, you know, subtle difference. Is able to, is able to, can. It depends how you want to understand this phrase. Sandra can drive now, but she hasn't got a car. So she has the capacity but she hasn't got the possibility of driving because she hasn't actually had a car, okay? Um, Sandra could drive in the past. She was able to, she could drive, but now we can understand that she doesn't drive anymore because now she hasn't got a car. So I don't see any problem with that. Sandra is able to drive, yes, as an alternative form of can. Good. So you understand. It's good. This is good. So... For me, the first option would be Sandra can drive. Yes, she can drive. She hasn't got a car. Last example, last little bit of test. We are switching and we're going in the negative form. I can't understand Martin. I've never mm, to understand him. Ooh, that was a giveaway. That was a giveaway. Uh, if you get this wrong, it's your fault because I've just given it away. So, I can't understand Martin. I've never mm, understand him. Look at the tense. Enrica was able to... I have never was able to. Not quite. I think we can do better than that. Enrica, being able to. Rosanna, being able to. Fine. You understand. This is the only possible form here. Being able to. Fabrizia, Lele, yes, being able to. Good students. Good students. Give yourself a pat on the shoulder. Yes. Got it. Understood. Why being able to? Because we have, yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have never been able to. Lucia not couldn't, Patrizia not can, because we have a present perfect. And can has only two forms in the form can, present or could in the past. But we need to use a participle here. I have never been able to. 
Enrique, excuse me. No, it's okay. It's, it's good. Making mistakes is good. It's an opportunity to learn. Okay? So, Lucia, it is, I have never been able to. Like Lele and Fabrizia and Enrica wrote earlier on. And somebody else as well. Good. Okay. So, I hope this was understandable. I hope this was okay for you. Next time, perhaps, we can do must or ought to or have to. You know, similar concept, similar idea. Another modal auxiliary verb. We will, we will analyze all of them. Don't worry about that, okay? So, oh gosh, nearly an hour. We're, um, time really flies. I'm, I'm always amazed at how quickly these this moments pass. And I still just about managed to finish my tea. Managed to, <laughs> was able to finish my tea. Let me just have the final swing. Nice. Mmm, this is nice. It's cold, but it is nice. I recommend this tisans. It's a good alternative to green tea. I don't like green tea, but I like this a lot. Mm. All right, people. Thank you very much for your company. Thank you for being with me. Um, tomorrow there will be a little video and every day we will post advice and tips on english and and mini 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 lessons of like five minutes and then remember that wednesday friday and monday like today we are live streaming on facebook so there will also be alex super teacher alex on wednesday and myself with a special guest every friday if you have special requests or topics that you want to talk about and discuss, let us know. We are here for you. Okay. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a fantastic evening. Bye.